<clears throat> going live, going live, going live. Welcome back to another episode of Comparison Cooking. I am live right now. So if you are tuning in after the live, make sure to watch this from your laptop because people will be jumping in and they leave comments in the live chat. And sometimes I respond to those comments uh, while the chat is going on. So it's a lot easier for you to follow along. And I'm going to just fill you in on what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we completed part two of the brisket series. The second phase, second part of that series was we took two Walmart select briskets. And when we took those briskets, we did not inject one. And then the other one we injected it was Cosmos brisket reserve blend. It was amazing. If you haven't watched that video, make sure to go check out that video so you can see what the results were. And I do see, hello, people watching. Hope you're having a great day. Um, so th that's what we're going to talk about because there were some final thoughts on the show, some things that went wrong, like my knife, for example. Uh, I bought it off of Amazon. It was a Dale Strong slicer. It's a phenomenal knife from everybody that's told me but it did not do the job. It felt really dull when trying to cook into that brisket. So what I tried to, I posed that question to everybody and what I, the response I got was when they received theirs, not all of them received them super sharp and they had to go themselves and grind that knife down, uh, professionally get the edge where it needed to be. And now it is a phenomenal uh, brisket blade. So that was one of the questions I had to the audience and thank God for the audience. They've already commented uh, lots of views within the first 24 hours and we're getting some really good feedback on what to improve with. Uh, the other part of it was how I cut the brisket. Uh, I didn't cut it like a professional blend or I'm sorry, a professional cut. And I have a reason for that. We were out hunting all day. We were having a great time. We were up till 11 o'clock the night before preparing the brisket. We were up at 5.30 in the morning getting ready to go duck hunting. And by the time we got in around 11, we made some other pit stops. But the reality was we did not eat anything. And we were just starving. And it's also a matter of personal preference when you cut brisket. I know there is a competition way to do it. And me and my friends have talked about entering a competition. We talked about it about two years ago. And we didn't want to do it because there's so many rules to entering a barbecue competition about how you have to slice your meat, how you have to prepare it. We have a, uh, a Traeger. I have a Traeger we use for brisket. We have a towable smoker my friends and I use. We have a Traeger Ironwood 885. And we just like to do good backyard barbecue. And one of my friends that has a $7,000 towable smoker, when he pulls his brisket out, 99% of the time, he doesn't even let it rest. I know for some people, that's a cardinal sin, not letting a brisket rest. But we've been at many of his parties and the full 15 pound packer brisket is gone normally within 10 to 12 minutes. I'm not kidding you that fast. Not only does he not rest it, but he doesn't slice it. He gets his cleaver knife out, no joke, and he just starts chopping away to where it's all this bite size, whether it's the flat or the point. And he just starts chopping away and to where, because we do pickings, where you're just walking by and you're grabbing and going and you don't even break out the forks and utensils. So I know there are certain ways you're supposed to competition style cut a brisket. I've done it when we, I haven't been in a rush. I separate the flat from the point and I cut it in two different directions like you're supposed to do it. But guess what? We were having a phenomenal time hunting on a ginormous farm and it was a fantastic retreat. And by the time we got to cutting, I was just cutting the thing. I was just like, it's game on. Everybody here is hungry. Everybody's ready to eat. So I just started cutting. And I will say, I have separated the flat from the brisket before. 
and then cut the brisket a certain way. What's up, Tommy? How are you? Uh, guys, if you don't know yet, you have to go to Tommy's channel right after this and check out the amazing Molly Burger. It is a brand new smash burger, and it is one of the best burgers you're ever going to see. And it's starting right now, January 2020. Brand new cooks. Tommy's bringing them to you, the Gallery Backyard Barbecue. Back to the brisket and the point. When I've separated and I've cut it, I honestly don't enjoy it. And I don't think my guests enjoy it as much as when I just slice right through the point in the flat. And then you got that big ridge of fat going right through the piece of meat. I kid you not, I haven't heard any complaints. No one said this is too fatty. This is way too much. Uh, so that was something somebody commented immediately. You're not slicing this properly. Uh, but it is what it is. Oh, do it. Hopefully I got everybody on a brisket kick with all this brisket going on, Tommy. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about regarding uh, one of the things you saw, you might have saw that I messed up on with wrapping with butcher's paper. So one of my friends told me that beef broth, I've, ha I've had some conflicting stories here. Some people say beef broth does the trick and you can uh, add it, inject it like I did with the phosphate and it provides great taste and flavor. Other people say it doesn't keep it as moist. Who knows? I mean, I don't think a lot of people, Steven, what's up? I don't think a lot of people cook two to three to five to 10 briskets at a time, injecting one, injecting the other, and then not. So it's really hard to tell when you're not doing a side-by-side. -side. But I'm sure if you just put beef broth in, it would probably be awesome. Uh, you can't see anything. Is anybody else having problems? Sorry, Ricky. Um, the other thing that happened was the butcher's paper stuck to the bottom of the brisket. And uh, I've only used butcher paper a handful of times. I uh, used to use a lot of tin foil. Hey, Ricky, can you still not see anything? Tommy, Steven, can you see anything? Looks and sounds awesome. All right, thanks, Tommy. Um, you're, my friend told me you're supposed to put beef broth at the bottom of the butcher paper. I didn't think to do that because I never would have thought to do that. But he puts, right before he puts the brisket in, uh, he drops some beef broth in the bottom just so uh, just so he can keep it from sticking. I think that's a good point. I'm going to try that the next time around. I need to get some big tins, uh, aluminum tins to do that. Justin, what's going on? Harmon Heat. Um uh, Ricky, maybe try refreshing the page. I know last time some people had trouble. They just refreshed the page and they were good to go. So that was disappointing when it stuck to the butcher's paper. Uh, other things, talked about the issue with the knife. Um, talked about competition barbecue. I think I might have said this, might have not. The Real Show Barbecue. Uh, Scott over there, he has a competition brisket. Now, that thing looks amazing. That was... Uh, Prime, no, actually, I think it was Wagyu, and it was just looked like a phenomenal, oh, awesome, good to see you, Ricky. Um, that was just a phenomenal cook. So I'm starting to think, I need to break this series up into, I'm already thinking of doing a second brisket series, because this series is, I'm a regular backyard cook. I am not a professional cook. Um, I go to work in a suit every day. I do not... I am not professionally trained. I have never done a competition. So what I'm starting to think is after we finish this initial series, maybe in late summer or the fall, I do a competition series where I take all the recipes I can find and walk them through what would a competition brisket really look like. Because like I said before, the way I party with my friends and we make brisket we normally don't wrap it. We normally just keep it on there. We don't inject it. And the brisket's gone within, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. If you're at a good party and the brisket comes out, 
normally, uh, shoot, we're having a video problem. Normally, it shouldn't be an issue. Hold on. Oh, the video is out. <laughs> I thought you meant this video was out. Uh, Yes, my video is out on the select injected versus non injected. So make sure to check that out. Uh, the next video is probably going to be cooking the leftovers. And then eventually I'll get Harmon Heat, Justin from Harmon Heat, uh, down to my house. And Tommy, if you want to come along for that ride too, you're more than welcome. Uh, and we'll probably do a prime versus select. So that's one of the next cooks I'm going to be doing. Um, so we just have a lot of stuff going on. Did you guys see anything in the video? Any questions you had? Uh, got a lot of positive comments. Thank you all for that. Uh, not too many uh, negative. Tommy, I'm trying to figure out because my freezer is full of brisket. Uh, I'm going to hopefully this weekend start getting through a lot of that. Um yeah, you're from Asbury here. You're literally probably two hours and 15 minutes, Tommy, if not uh, three hours to be exact. Costco. All right. Ricky, have you done that before? Doing a, um injected brisket? Uh, but I will say injecting was like unreal. And you have to give it – okay, Ricky – uh, hopefully we'll see those on Instagram, uh, because that injection was unbelievable. I don't know if you could hear, uh, while everyone was tasting, but we were trying to, we were praying that the injection was just going to be okay because obviously now you gotta buy the Cosmos. That's about, I think I got it for 29 bucks on, uh, Amazon. It should last. I would probably imagine six or seven if not 10 briskets. Um, here's one thing, Ricky. So for that, that one I injected ended up being 11 pounds and they tell you to put one third cup of the Cosmos in to two cups water. Uh, I probably only used a cup of it, of the water once it was all mixed together. So you could probably use a sixth of the seasoning and only one cup of water for a big brisket but if you don't want to cut corners by all means you just follow the recipe on the back uh, i'll probably go a little bit less so i can make that cosmos last a little longer so i don't have to spend all that money um but i want to kind of pose this question to everybody have you guys put out uh or cooked something a certain way and you're just getting like a little bit of shade right i mean i know us Instagrammers, us YouTube uh, content creators, there's always shade being thrown out there. Uh, but people are like, I don't know, it kind of bugged me. They're just like, oh, I saw you do some things on that video. And it just, uh, what were you thinking? And it's just like, this is food. Like this, this is a journey. This is experimenting. I, I don't bake because I think baking is a science. Uh, that you have to follow step by step by step. And that's boring to me. Food, cooking, that is creative. That is creating your own art. And I'm not artistic. I can't draw anything. I can't paint anything. And I don't have a musical bone in my body. So cooking is my art. And I don't feel like always replicating what other people are doing. I want to create my own thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, Tommy, I can't imagine at 3,500 uh, how much shade you are getting thrown away. Microwave brisket, that I, I might have to go toaster oven before I go microwave. But, but the point is, if you make really good food and you always have your dish cleaned at your parties, why do you have to cook it a competition brisket style when your friends don't want that? Or... Yeah, they might appreciate it, but if you're making phenomenal food and you don't have to take like 15 extra steps, should you do that? And I guess my point is I'm not a competition barbecue person. I am a backyard, regular dude, weekend barbecue warrior. Uh, I want my food to taste great, but I also want it to be different. 
uh, when you go to a party, you don't want the food to taste every single time. Hey, Ricky, if you're still there, I don't know if you know uh, Harmon Heat and the gallery backyard, but make sure you guys check each other out. Uh, awesome dudes. And uh, Tommy was saying Tommy's getting bigger. He wants to get to 10,000 by the end of this year. So any promotion, we can help get Tommy. His channel is rocking. He just made, I don't know if you saw it, but he just made the Molly burger. And that's what I'm talking about. That's creativity. That's making new food that is going to be uh, something memorable. Like that's the one thing I can't do on YouTube and I'm trying to avoid on YouTube is I don't want to make a hamburger on a Weber grill. That's only been done like 86,000 times. I want to make a burger that nobody's seen before. Or I, for me and my channel, I just, <laughs> Justin, man, I, I got you, man. Uh, my channel is not cooking things perfect, competition style. It is answering questions that keep me awake. Like, what if, you know that brisket I had three weeks ago? What if I had injected it? You know, I feel like Peter Griffin. Like, I always, I, I have regrets. I regret getting that salad one time when I could have gotten soup. What did that soup taste like? I'll never know. These are the things that run through my head. And this is what my channel is, is answering these questions. Should you inject or should you not? Not Kevin's making a competition brisket today. We're just trying to get to the bottom of some myths and uh, know if it's truly better, or truly worth your time. And I don't know if you guys were here before here. Actually, let me get caught up real quick. Maybe it's a homemade cocktail for making a cheap yet effective injection. Yeah, homemade cocktail. Justin, what do you got in mind? Uh, all right, man. One time when I did a wrap brisket, I used jerk gold as a soaker. It was freaking awesome. Jerky gold. I'll have to check that one out. Jerky gold. Uh, Justin's crying in the corner. Is uh, Pepper with you? What's the name of your dog? Little Pepper? <laughs> Grill Sergeant. Andrew's in the house. Uh but back to uh, back to my point was, you know, we just need to keep being creative. And I'm not here to be a competition chef. I am here to answer questions that keep uh, that people pose, that people want to understand the answers to. Is this a waste of time? My people. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, anyway, Justin, did you blow up your grill this weekend and cook the pork shoulders and brisket? Or is that, uh, are we still waiting? I'm looking forward to that video. Nice. Uh, all right. So just to keep this going, what our brisket prices out. So I got the 11 pound for 35 and then I got the 12 and 13 right around 42, 43. You know, I did see a video or an Instagram post where somebody got a Costco prime for like $49. So I'm very curious to shop Costco. And just remember everybody, you have Costco, you have BJ's and then you have Sam's club. Those are the bulk discounters. Walmart and Sam's Club, all the food comes from the same place. Um, so BJ's has their own. I don't know about BJ's. I know Costco has special ranches that they only get their meat from. And everybody raves about Costco. And if they're getting brisket at Costco for under $50, that is considered USDA prime. I'm very excited to check that out. I might have misread it. It could have been USDA choice which is still really good. Uh, Costco was three. Was that you, Ricky, that posted that? Um, yeah, look at that. Prime for $3.99. Uh, here's the thing. So the Real Show Barbecue mentioned this. I think Pickles also mentioned this. When you get the higher grade briskets, you need less and less injection. Uh, so I'm kind of in a quandary over... Do I inject when I go Walmart Select versus Costco Prime? I'm going to. But 
now I almost I'm not going to do this, but I almost feel like throwing in a third brisket, a Costco Prime with no injection. Uh, but I think that's just overkill. Uh, two briskets was enough food, and uh, three would be insane. Uh, so I am on the hunt, Ricky. Feel free to jump in on this and just shoot me a recipe on Instagram. Uh, I have a couple recipes in mind for what to do with the leftovers, but I'm trying to just show everybody really creative ways to cook leftover brisket instead of just defrosting it and making a brisket barbecue sandwich. Um, I had a question for everybody, especially you big barbecuers. Do you ever get exhausted or eat your recipe throughout the day? And what I mean eat your recipe throughout the day is like you're out back, you're smoking a uh, brisket, you're smoking pork Boston butt. And then all of a sudden, you pull it, it rests, you get ready to cut into it, and you just, you eat like one bite. And then you're like, can I just go get McDonald's? Like, no BS. Like, all I want right now is a burger or something, like, something bready. Do you ever get barbecue fatigue? And I was, I talked to a couple of neighbors about this, that we had a big 4th of July cook-off. And none of us wanted to eat our food. Like one guy brought flank steak. One guy brought uh, Boston butts. I brought briskets. Shocker. And none of us wanted to eat the food. Like we were trying each other's food, but we were just so smoked out. Everyone's like, oh, the smoke, all the guests, because it was competition, like a neighborhood competition. I know I just said for 20 minutes, I... Don't want to be in competition. It was a friendly neighborhood competition. But we were all just, we were done. Like, after enough drinking. <laughs> Heat, I'm with you, man. No, I'm not going vegan, but uh, Andrew, what's the longest you've cooked for? Like, you know, six hours, eight hours, 10, 12 uh, injected old boot is the best. I, I've been there. I've been there in New Orleans. You know, get a little, have a little too much, and then next thing you know, you're on the side of the corner eating a shoe. It's weird, but it happens, right? I mean, that's life. Uh, but now I was just curious if any. I know some of my neighbors said they have that barbecue fatigue or smoker fatigue, and it just. Uh, I want to throw it out there as kind of a let's get a census. Yeah, you're, you're just exhausted from the sun, uh, 4th of July, all the drinking, liquid smoke. Literally, the bottle of liquid smoke. Um, God, I've, I've used that a little bit. It's actually not bad. Like, people are like, oh, you're not a purist. And I was like, dude, my food tastes good. Like, back off. Uh, other interesting fact I found out this week that uh, you might find interesting. Traeger pellets. Traeger pellets. I was in the store getting ready to buy Traeger pellets and I actually used them because my buddy had some. But the gentleman that owned the store said these Traeger pellets, and I don't know if this is 100% true. That's why I'm throwing it out there. I'm sure I'll get like five different answers from people. But Traeger puts flavoring or puts like hickory flavor on the pellets. They're not actually hickory hardwood. It's not cherry hardwood. They just, you know, compress some type of tree and then add flavor. I've heard from people that trigger uh, uh, liquid alcohol. <laughs> uh, I've heard from people that Traeger does not have premium pellets. And so I did buy a bag of straight. These pellets came from Hickory. But I'm still trying to fact check that whether hickory does, uh, whether Traeger really does add flavoring or not. And at the same time, I kind of don't care. I, I've used it enough where it was really good. Uh, what was the temperature of the flat? The flat was a little bit higher. That was like 215. But what's going on, Ryan? How are you, man? Hey, Ryan. Uh, welcome to the chat. 
Uh, guys, Ryan is a friend from Facebook that is big into the Facebook groups. Uh, so you might want to reach out to Ryan and uh, check him out because he's very supportive in the Facebook groups and just an awesome dude. Um, you know, where did I? I had the probe really in the thick. I had two extra probes ready to stick in the flat. But... It was 23 degrees at 11 o'clock at night, and the wind was still blowing like 15 to 20. So I literally like got the briskets on, got the probe in, and the temperature dropped, like you saw from the 200 range down to 105 in like 15 seconds. It was cold. And so I wanted to add the extra two probes, but I just said pass, and I went straight to just continuing to get the second one on. Uh, it was kind of poor planning, but whatever. So I didn't really measure the flats at well, but they definitely came off right around the 205, the 210 mark. So I'm guessing the flats were probably a little hotter, uh, but they were damn delicious. They were really good. Um, Trigger pellets are... Okay. Thank you, Michael. So... I'm taking that as confirmed. I don't want to do any more research. Michael is the expert here. Uh, so question asked, Michael answered, they are injected. But then again, I injected that brisket. So I really can't hold, hold them back on doing that. And that's kind of my point is when somebody told me you should use premium hardwood, that could be true. That could be totally true. But, you know, I, I've been happy with the Traeger community. Uh, they're very responsive and people are very into the community. So I did buy some premium wood. So I might be doing an experiment. Now, Michael, another question right back at you. Do you have a blanket for your Traeger? Yeah, I go out and snuggle with it on a regular basis. I caught the Weber, Andrew from from the grill sergeant is going to be too happy with this, but I, I caught the Weber trying to snuggle up with the Traeger the other day. It was, yeah, they were snuggled right next to each other. Um, what was my question? Oh, so Michael, I don't know if you do use the Traeger, but I feel like the smoke ring will only, <laughs> wow, Ricky, Ricky got aggressive there. Uh, the smoke ring will only get that big. And when we use my buddy's towable smoker with logs and sticks, the smoke ring will get that big uh, from my memory. So I'm just trying to figure out, um, has anyone gotten like a huge smoke ring with their Traeger? Cause I honestly feel like it just puts a, a hint of smoke, which is great because a lot of times if you put a lot of smoke on there, uh, it can be pretty, it, it can be a little too heavy for a lot of people that don't eat a lot of smoke flavor. So that's where kind of Traeger, I will give them credit where credit's due. You push a button, you can go run errands and you can come back and you can get your blanket out and you can snuggle with it. Right, Ricky? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a blanket? I don't know where, where you were going with that. <laughs> hey, Tommy, thanks for swinging by. Andrew, do you know how to set mod mods, be a moderator for chats? You're going to have to fill me in on that one. All right, I just got a pit, paw, pit boss pellet grill. Okay, I, so I've heard... Better smoke ring. Okay, with hardwood chunks. I've heard that Rectech pit boss are like the Mercedes and BMW of pits uh, pellet smokers. And then Traeger is like, you know, a little bit a step below. But after using an ironwood, that thing was pretty, that thing was sick. Uh, so I just don't know. I've never gotten a great smoke ring. So it's very interesting to hear that uh, you, you, it's good to hear. God, it's like, Michael, where are you coming from? Expert, 
expert Michael here. Everybody, make sure to subscribe to Michael's channel because he's got the answers. I don't research a lot before I go. I just think of questions I want answered. And for example, I have in my freezer um, how I have a bag of brisket soaked in beef broth, frozen. And then I have another brisket that doesn't have any beef broth in there. I just want it to answer these questions. I didn't want to do a lot of research. I don't have time for research. We're doing too many things. I got young kids. I have questions. I'd rather just go buy two cuts of meat, go to the, my backyard and figure it out. Uh, yes. Are there certain ways I could cut corners and learn from other people? Absolutely. And I do research from time to time, but for the most part, I'd rather just uh, go check out Michael's channel and get it from the expert. All right, right click on the name, three dots. God, you're brilliant. Add moderator, grill sergeant. Grill sergeant is default uh, moderator just due to he uh, gets to, he, he got me started on live, which was last week. So thank you, Andrew. It's, it's been like forever. My best cook was on the char brawl with the side fire box. Yeah. Wait, which char bro? Was that the uh, like the hundred and thirty dollar one? Because I had that one, and it was amazing. And I replaced it with a Traeger. And I, I'm on. Honestly, I was a little disappointed because that thing was so much fun. It wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a lot of. You didn't get to fiddle with it, but then again, I'm too busy now with the kids. Yes. All right, Ricky. Do you still have it? Because uh, I gave it away to a friend and he just finally had to put her out of her misery. She got a lot of rust and charcoal. Oh my goodness. There's, uh, I thought Tommy was coming back into the chat. Whew. Yeah. Andrew will, Andrew will time you out. No vids on my channel yet. Just started IG recently and hoping to try YouTube videos soon. All right, guys. Let's subscribe to Michael now so we can uh, be the first ones to see his videos when he launches. Michael, am I following you on YouTube? And I'm sorry, not YouTube, uh, Instagram. Because I feel like that's the only problem with YouTube is it's so hard to be connected to YouTube to Instagram with the same usernames. And it's just... YouTube did not make that easy. Hopefully they make that easier to communicate back and forth with people and connect, but Instagram is definitely the easier platform to connect with. All right, grill, Sergeant, I've heard of smoke tube, but haven't tried it yet. Oh, I missed that, Andrews. So you've done the smoke tube. I've heard of the smoke tube. People are pretty happy with that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm at a crossroads and I know what everybody here will say. But I was tempted to sell my Traeger to get a ceramic style uh, cooker, like a Green Egg or a Primo. Uh, what's the other one? Komodo Joe. But now, after do using that Ironwood 885 Traeger and the ease of that, I don't think I want to go back to fiddling. I, you know, I always fiddle when we get the towable smoker out and we get to play with that thing. Um, <laughs> Ricky, you got it all, man. Ricky, uh, you better show on your stories in the next day or two, your whole lineup. I want to see the whole backyard of grills because that would be awesome. Um, but like it's, it really is convenient to hit a button, go run your errands. I got a 13 year old holy cow she's 13 now and a six-year-old which is even more crazy um and we got a lot of things we we got to do throughout the day uh nicholas awesome just got in here but i just cooked a brisket no way are you pulling my leg dude because that's what i just did my video on hopefully you check that out uh we did two briskets injected versus not injected on the traeger ironwood 885 and it was pretty ridiculous. So that that was the final point of the ceramics versus Traeger 
is do I now sell my Traeger Pro? Uh, Oregon Barbecue. Nice, dude. Awesome. I know your Instagram. That's great. Um, do I now jump up to the Ironwood 80, 885 instead of going the other direction, which I was going to go, uh, which was, you know what it was, ceramics. And I just worry about s sitting and playing with charcoal all day when I got to run. Sounds like I have to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Cooking with Charbox. Dude, thank God you started to do your intro with saying the name of your channel, which guys, if you haven't checked out Cooking with Charbox, uh, the reason I'm saying it that way is because uh, I still haven't quite gotten it down. And as you were on my last live last week, you learned that I don't speak English too good. It's just not my thing. Uh, I like to say words that aren't real. And so when I hear people say things certain times, I don't really catch it. But uh, you could go both. It sounds like you have to go both. <sighs> You're right. I might have to have both. No, I want to sell my pro. And the reason I want to sell my pro is uh, I don't – when I sold my Charbro or when I bought the Traeger, my Charbro just sat and sat and sat. And I've always, always felt like my Traeger Pro 22 is going to have electrical issues. And I've had some cooks where the pellets inside the auger heat up and start to smoke. And my smoke box almost caught on fire. Uh, so it's just been very, you know, like if you buy a Honda, they're super reliable or they were in the 90s and the 2000s. But there were still people that had electrical problems with their Honda. Like you can't make 30,000 perfect vehicles. You can't make 30,000 perfect grills. And I just feel like if I could unload it for about $300 and use that towards uh, 885, I mean, like, um, like cooking with your box says to, to Andrew grill sergeant, you're going to have to help me out on this one. How do we get him in here so he can say, ah, but once you go 885, you'll never go back. No, I don't doubt that. That thing looks awesome. Great. I went on here to talk about all the things that happened with this brisket series and it just turned into Kevin can't speak the English. And that's awesome. Great. Great job, guys. Making me feel good. A pro 34. God, there's so many good options out there, but that 885, I mean, I, I know I've said it a hundred times. Uh, Anyway, get anyone that can translate the English language so Kevin can understand it. That's who we need to get in here. Uh, do you want to see what other things did you want to see with the brisket series or questions answered? I know uh, the slicer. I don't know. I don't think a lot of you guys were in here. Yeah, the sensor upgrade on that 885 was ridiculous. Uh, I don't think a lot of you guys were in here when I talked about my Dale Strong knife for slicing that brisket. And if you watch the video, you probably could see it was a bit ridiculous. That thing only was used once before. And I got it just strictly for slicing brisket. And when you get a brand new knife in the mail, you think this thing's supposed to be, uh, this thing is supposed to be, laser sharp. Like when I get my Hattori kitchen knives, those things will cut you. They will cut you, man. Justin knows he's got a Hattori kitchen knife over at Harmon Heat. Uh, but I was told afterwards, after I fumbled with cutting this brisket, which felt like live TV because all my friends were there. Uh, one of my friends told me he got Dale, his Dale Strong knives in there. And they just, when they're not razor sharp, when you get them and he put a real fine edge to it. And once he did that, he's been slicing his briskets. I just didn't think a brand new knife used once was going to need a sharpen until I'd gone through, you know, 10 or 15 briskets. So, so I've been told by a handful of people with the Dale Strong's just with that slicer you might need to sharpen the heck out of it. All right. 
What did you guys think about that? Because that shocked me. I don't know. I didn't think I'd have to do that. All right. I saw I saw Ricky. Let's talk about brisket knives. See, I wanted that brisket knife to be a beautiful thing. Do I sharpen my own knives? No, actually, I have like one of those fake sharpeners, the one you like throw your thing in. I've done the chef thing. Uh, I'm not... I'm not like an expert. Like I said, I'm not a chef. I'm a backyard barbecue weekend warrior. Now, have you seen that branch uh, knife aid? Yeah. Knife aid. They actually did mine for free. If I posted on Instagram, uh, one story about the experience and number two, a post and you had to keep the post up for like 180 days, which I don't know why I would delete the post. So Andrew, when I got those knives sharpened back from knife aid and literally I sent them out five knives, I think on a Tuesday night. And I'm pretty sure they were back by Friday or Saturday morning. And it just, it, they're sharp. I'm tempted to learn a little bit about knife sharpening, but at the same time, I'm one of those guys, I can make barbecue sauces, uh, but I just ordered some barbecue sauce from Freddy Fox Sauce. He makes a killer sauce on Instagram. You can find him. Uh, I buy seasonings. I can make my own seasonings. I just don't like to spend time doing that type of prep work. I like to get in there and cook. I don't want to do all the other stuff. I don't want to get rubs. I don't want to make sauces. Uh, I was told the brisket stuck to the bottom of the paper because I did not add beef broth to the bottom of the paper. So that is where, that's what one of my friends jumped out after saying I was a terrible cook. Um, he jumped in. I'm just kidding. He jumped in and said, uh, I should have put beef broth. I'd get a big tin, aluminum tin, put the butcher paper in there, put a little bit of beef broth, and then drop the brisket in there, then wrap in that tin foil tin. Uh, so that could have helped. And when we normally do briskets, half the times we don't even wrap them. We put a water pan underneath of them, and they stay moist and all that stuff. But I will tell you, after you inject it, you will think every other brisket is dry, even if moisture is flowing out of it. All right. Ricky, do you have, uh, are you toying around with doing a YouTube channel or anything? Or are you just sticking to Instagram at this point? Uh, all right, Nicholas. I use work, sharp knife, sharpener, nice. Can, can get the mat. Oh, that does sound nice. See, these are uh, you guys are bad influences because now I like want to toy with sharpening my own knives, and I just have to realize that's not it's not my cup of tea. So, am I recommending injecting? Absolutely. If you haven't seen the latest video, uh, this weekend I was away at a hunt camp on one of my buddy's farms, and we cooked up two briskets. One of them we didn't inject. The other one we did. Uh, feel free to check out the video. If not, you're here and I appreciate you being here. So the answer was we inject it with phosphate from Cosmos uh, Blended Reserve Brisket. That thing was out of control ridiculous. It was just super juicy. Um, it was just better. And on the video, you can hear my friends. They're just like, it's just better. I don't think it added any flavor, but just the just the added juiciness, the moisture, it was just off the charts. And then I was slicing the other brisket and you could just, it looked dry, even though there was juice coming out of it. Uh, I had steaks cooked by Kevin and they were amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that Harmon heat. Um, wasn't as moist as I wanted to. Yeah. I know uh, mama bear on um, Instagram. She just cooked up a brisket on her brand new Traeger and she was like throwing in the white flag so we were trying to give her some support and help her get her next brisket to where she wants to be. Uh, so I pose this question to you guys because Harmon Heat, you just made me think of something uh, about thank you for the compliment about the steaks. 
but we asked in a, a podcast I do with my wife on business, which is totally separate from cooking, obviously. Duh. Um, we asked in the podcast, it was like good date night questions. And it was like, you're, you're on death row. What's the last meal you're going to eat? So my wife and I went around. And then when my kids came home from school, we asked my oldest and she's like, uh, uh, dad steaks. Yeah. If I'm on death row, like I need dad steaks and yeah, it was pretty awesome. So very nice compliment. Hello. What's going on, dude? Um, yes, mom very is learning, but she is an awesome cook. Like I've seen her throw down some amazing cooks, uh, just like you do, dude. Uh, but yeah, should be interesting. All right. We couldn't uh, see the smoke ring originally in the video, but it looks like later it appeared. Yeah. I got home. We were, <sighs> the brisket videos are tough. They are tough because you can't cook up two briskets and not have, your buddy's over. And when you're cooking up 25 pounds of meat, your friends are going to be over and you try to record it. You try to get the close-ups in, but we were up partying till about 1130 the night before getting duck and goose decoys out for the morning hunts uh, on my buddy's farm. And then we woke up at 530 in the morning to <laughs> you better call it Becky with the good hair. I, I, I don't know what that's referencing, but I like the randomness. So we woke up at 530 to go duck hunting. Uh, we went duck hunting till about 830. We came back in. Another group of guys were coming in to do the goose hunt. And we were checking on the brisket, uh, getting ready to wrap it, I think. Then we pulled it off at 11. None of us had really eaten. So we're up drinking till 10, 30, 11, woke up at 5, 30, didn't eat breakfast. Uh, and now everybody's like dying to eat brisket. So it's super hard to say like, hey guys, hold on. I'm going to do a close up. So don't touch that food. I will beat you if you touch that food and ruin my Instagram shot. Um, so that's why... I love it when my friends are involved with the video, but at the same time, I'm like cringing. I'm like, should I tell them like, Hey guys, don't touch anything. Like you need to let this sit and let me take like five minutes of photos. It's like, you got to enjoy life. You can't do everything for IG or YouTube. So we jumped right into just cutting it up and digging in. And luckily I knew there was going to be a left. So I tried to snap some other shots and hopefully you could see the smoke ring and we were just talking about it. the smoke rings are never that impressive. I mean, it was nice, but ah, I love a smoke ring like that big. And you, I've never gotten it anywhere close to that with the Traeger. Uh, <laughs> heat, dude, you, you don't get in trouble, man. Does it make me a quack addict? Actually, I am... I'm about to be done with duck hunting. I'm tired of waking up at 5.30 in the morning with the boys after partying all night and then expect it to uh, go and jump these ducks early in the morning. I'm becoming more of a goose hunter where you don't have to roll out of bed until 8, 8.30 after a fun night on the town and uh, pulling shenanigans and then rolling out into the field. <laughs> I don't give a see we gotta I don't give a I'm touching that food uh you know I've definitely pulled back on my IG pictures just to like I hit it hard back in 2019 and now it's like look if the family doesn't want to slow down to like let me take a picture I kind of like pull back and just like have at it I don't get the do it for the IG shot that you hope to get uh, but it's all, it's all good. Yep. We were wearing the camo for the hunting. Uh, but anyway, it was just, it was an awesome experience. I kind of, I know I have this plan of these next cooks, but we wrapped that cook up into that hunt and we literally like the geese were dive bombing in. It was just a crazy, awesome hunt. Very good. My buddy's got a huge farm. And that's rare on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. 
So very fortunate to have such a close friend that we can go use that farm. But like just, you know, the night before getting the brisket ready, everybody's coming into town, we're popping shots, we're drinking beers. Like it's a hard, hard thing to follow when you have that quite that much of an experience. And now when I do the select brisket versus the Costco prime, uh, it's probably going to be at my house. It's not going to be a rager or anything like that. It's just not going to, Oh dude, grill sergeant. I hope to God you are Googling these questions and jokes because if you know these off the top of your head, dude, I got a question what you do with your daily time. <laughs> uh, yes, crabs are huge in Maryland. Um, they are definitely – the Maryland blue crab is really, really good. I'm a dad joke supplier. We got to get you a shirt, Justin – or Andrew, sorry. Uh, actually, you know what, though? I take that Costco cook back because Harmon Heat's probably going to be here hanging out. Uh, we might get Grill Sergeant to fly across the country. I'm sure the wife would love that. And uh, Tommy from the Gallery Backyard, you never know. He's only like a three-hour drive away. So that could actually turn out to be a, a big thing. Uh, and that could bring up the excitement again. Because hanging out with the YouTube creators and IG people is just, those are always good times. Uh, but it is, uh, do, does ducks have crabs? Yeah, Ricky, sometimes you got to, you know, Definitely wash your hands after touching a duck. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to get that. I was thinking of doing a. Sarge is a. He's a comedian, and if you guys, if Ricky, if you haven't seen Grill Sergeant's videos, um, they're really good. They, he's he's a creative guy. Uh, he's got a music video that is unbelievable. And we got Cooking with CJ in the house. If you guys like live chats and awesome shows with Cooking with the New Ninja, uh, Cooking with CJ is where it's at. He has all these recipes down. And on Thursday night, I honestly, like, sometimes I'm like, honey, she's like, you want to watch a movie? I'm like, watch a movie? You got Cooking with CJ on. Like, we're about to get down. They're doing shots. I'm doing shots, even though nobody's paying me to do shots. I'll still do them with you. Um, so, yeah, it's a good time. We have a lot of fun, and so that's awesome. Uh, get me on the hot seat. Whew. I'm in. Whenever you want to do it, we can do that. Uh, Ricky, also, just to let you know, Harmon Heat's channel, uh, he tries hot sauces and if you uh, want to have any more crab jokes, you should see the joke his sister tells on YouTube. She literally did this on YouTube while eating Maryland blue crabs. And that thing was pretty damn funny. Uh, I have been on that show. And we that was one of the best Friday nights of 2019 for sure. Am I available this Thursday? Why do you need somebody? Because I could probably make that happen this Thursday. What time does it start? Drawing a blank. Nine o'clock, right? Uh, we could hang together in the future. Fabian, I want you there. You better be there. If I'm on there, you better be there. And guess what? Even if I'm not on there, I want you there. I want you there. Uh, dude, I am doing what? Blah, 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 blah. Dude, I think I can make that work. you just going to have to 6 p.m. Yep, I'm on the East Coast, so... I'll be tuning in at nine. Uh, I think you're just going to have to run me through what you got on grill, Sergeant. You're just going to have to run me through how to log in and all that stuff. So we can definitely make that happen. That's going to be awesome. Everybody still in this chat, make sure you are planning on checking out Cooking with CJ this Thursday night because – Number one, all you cool chat people are going to be there. It's going to be another good one. And now I'm going to be there. So why the hell not? <laughs> Piece of cake. All right. Uh, awesome sauce. Justin, are you seeing that? That I will be on Cooking with CJ this 
Thursday. So we got to start pumping this up on Instagram to let everybody know they can see Kevin get drunk. Bum, 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 boom. So for you, anyone here that doesn't know, like Ricky, I'm not sure if you follow Cooking with CJ, uh, but Thursday night they do a um, – uh, he does a live chat, and people have the option to start having people power drinks and just ripping shots, and it gets good. And, you know, CJ, what a gentleman. Like, what a sacrifice. He's falling on this sword for us. Guys, he's doing it for us uh, to get drunk on Thursday night. You know how bad he probably feels Friday? But look, every Thursday night, he tunes in and goes, I'm doing this for you guys. What what an awesome dude. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> All right. Now I'm like, I committed to that. And now I'm like nervous about that because I got to, I'm going to get asked all these questions. Ricky, what's your favorite drink? All right, to the whole group, what's your favorite hard liquor? What do you like to drink? It's a thankless job for sure. <laughs> I love the, uh, I don't know if it was your girlfriend or wife, but in one of your videos I saw recently, CJ, uh, your wife said something in the back room, background, and you're like, well, one of us has to work around here. And I was like, yikes. <laughs> All right, Grill Sergeant is a whiskey man. Then we got Ricky Tequila Tequila. All right. All right. Or good old fashioned. Yeah, old fashioned. So my go to is vodka. And vodka is a good friend of mine. Uh, whiskey, I will not do with cooking with CJ because whiskey. Um, has this effect that I time travel sometimes when I start taking shots of whiskey, like, you know, time traveling, like all of a sudden nine o'clock like three in the morning and you're on the side of the road, sleeping on a bench, you know, it's never happened to me, but, uh, whiskey's got that effect. Vodka. I can keep it, keep it going. Uh, CJ just messaged me. Thank you very much. We are now Facebook friends. So, now you know we're real friends. We're you're not real friends until you're Facebook friends. That's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, vodka is the way to go for me. Uh, learned my lesson with whiskey. Now, don't get me wrong. I drink whiskey at home, but I don't drink whiskey uh, in public settings that often or if I'm just ready to get to work up and then it's just going to be a hell of a weekend. All right. Well, well real quick, Ricky. I can't remember anything after tequila. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Right before we wrap this up, Ricky, are you um, – so you're down in Richmond? And if you're down in Richmond, do you know – don't drink, have a Caribbean twist like every now and then. Yeah. Dude, sometimes – good seeing you, Andrew. Thanks for uh, tuning in as always. And not drinking probably would be a good thing if I didn't really drink either. But, hey – my dad didn't raise me to be a quitter, so there you have it. Uh, do you ever hang out with – cheers, buddy. Uh, Ricky, do you ever hang out with Smoking It Up RBA style down there? Facebook official. Because <laughs> uh, I know Smoking It Up RBA style is uh, – do, he's down in Richmond, and he does a lot of awesome cooks down there. Gotcha. Gotcha. I know he goes and sees those like live theaters and stuff like that. Uh, so very cool. All right. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun as always. Uh, any last questions on the brisket series? I'll just give you the final 30 second pitch. Uh, we have a few more parts of this brisket series come and we're going to do the defrost. What's the best way to defrost it uh, to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck with defrosting your brisket. This is very interesting. Actually, CJ, uh, I wish Andrew was still on here. Uh, I looked up today on YouTube, and there were zero to none how to properly defrost or best methods to defrost already previously cooked food. There were a bazillion videos on how to defrost uh, raw food. 
but there were no videos on how to properly defrost the brisket or how to that's already been cooked. So I want to document that, you know, do you just put it in the fridge, microwave for defrost? I was thinking about going straight toaster. You know, I like just putting it right in the toaster, brisket slices. Uh, but that's one of the videos I want to do. And then uh, we're doing the best ways to cook leftover brisket, the best way to do it. Uh, that's not just regular. Defrost in the fridge is best. I've tried three ways. Okay, very cool. Carbon, good to see you. Thanks for chopping in. Pee on it. Wow, cooking with CJ. It's not even Tuesday, but I see we're drinking. I like that. I like that. But uh, Charlie from Pickles uh, Barbecue, he was saying you can drop it in the sous vide also. Uh, but I think I'm going to do three different methods. I'm going to do, and mind you, some of it's surrounded in beef broth. So I want to see if that had any fun, any effects. So we're going to do that. Cheers, CJ. I'll talk to you very soon. And then uh, we'll do the fancy cooks, and then we'll do select versus the Costco Prime, and then see what's the best then. And then I might jump into a second entirely different brisket series and try to replicate uh, competition-style brisket. But that would be probably later till the midsummer or into the fall. Gentlemen, good night, and I am going to call it here. Uh, I had a great time with everybody. Thank you for jumping in and enjoying the stream. It was great hanging out, and I'll see you on YouTube or Instagram. Have a good night.